We're on uh, Queen Street, uh, sitting in artist Rob Lang's uh, gallery. And today we're going to kind of sit down and just really talk about art, talk about life and uh, family, and we hope you guys enjoy it. All right, Rob, so talk to me about, you know, what really brought you to Charleston. I know you're not from here, and kind of talk, talk about, uh, you know, what brought you to opening a gallery on Queen Street. Well, I went to school up in, in Rhode Island. My then fiance, now wife, uh, was up there as well. And when we were graduating, what we saw was every single person in the Boston and kind of Providence area that we were hanging out in was moving to New York. So I did a little research and found that 10,000 painters a year moved to New York City. So rather than jump into kind of a, a, a rat race and a networking kind of game where you really have to, like, work yourselves in there. We decided to kind of travel down the East Coast and see if we could find a city that kind of oozed that, that cultural vibe that we we're looking for, but where you could see yourself being an artist for about, you know, 30, 50 years or so. And the moment we stepped foot in Charleston, it was pretty much a, a done deal. We feel really fortunate in this space. This building's from 1670, and it, it's been an art space since 1919. So we feel like it's already kind of oozing out of the walls that this was a creative location, and now we just signed a 15-year lease to stay here for the long haul and, and kind of watch Charleston grow. My hope is that somebody who's never felt comfortable in an art gallery walks through here, kind of feels comfortable enough with all the couches and the swing and all these things, and uh, see some work on the wall that somehow resonates with them a little bit, and they go home and they bake banana bread, or they work in their garden, or they do whatever there is their own kind of creative source. I meet so many people who don't feel comfortable in art galleries. They think of white walls and concrete floors and walking in the door and somebody sizing up their shoes, and if they don't have an art knowledge and can't speak with the vocabulary of art, then they don't feel comfortable. I think art is a completely opposite situation where it's, it's democratic, it belongs to everybody, it's a, it's a public service like anything else, and what you like about it is what you like about it. It's subjective, and therefore, like, if you like it because it reminds you of your grandma making pancakes, that's totally viable. So for me, I wanted to just make art that was kind of authentic. I like levity, I like humor, I like light. So I try to make art that kind of just makes people smile and at the end of the day, you know, that it possibly propels their own sense of creativity. Because for me, I, I have no belief in talent whatsoever. I think people have slight aptitudes towards things and after that it's just time. Talk about how being a father has has changed the way you look at art or... Talk about a creative explosion. I never realized, you know, people tell you all these cliche things about being a parent and, and I realized when it happened that it's, they're all true in one way or another. And, you know, I've hung out with, I feel like, hundreds of people and spent thousands of hours with them and have decade-long friendships and yet she shows up in my, the world, my, my daughter Taya, and in an instant, she's my favorite person I've ever met. You know, she moves right to the top of the line. I don't even know her yet and yet somehow she's my absolute favorite person. But what I've realized is for a, a creative mindset, she's not just a breath of fresh air, she's like a, a gold mine of, of imagination. And therefore, like looking through her lens on the world is probably the healthiest thing an artist can give themselves because once again, you're able to see wonder in everything. Yeah. You know, I realized the day that I point out the moon to her for the first time that I'm like, you know, I'm not showing you a scarf that's on sale at Nordstrom. I'm showing you the moon for the first time. So the concepts and the, the subject matters are just so enormous and big and wonderful that it once again, I feel like, revives that spirit in ourselves to see the moon as the wonderful thing that it is. My goal in life as, as a father is to hopefully be able to capture that lens on the world that she has and somehow put it into paint. So if she sees an elephant and thinks it's the size of a building, I'm gonna paint an elephant the size of a building. Well, talk to me about the art scene in Charleston. Obviously, you said you and Megan were attracted yeah. to it out of college. You came down here with 23. I mean, where has it come from since then, and where do you see it going? When we got here, what we realized what was happening was we were actually witnessing this turnover of galleries. So you're starting to find more galleries that weren't catering just towards regional work, where you do have marsh scenes and oceanscapes. And what's happening now is people are starting to bring contemporary artists from all over the world within, in every different type of genre. Artists are moving here, are kind of flocking here because of the cultural scene and the restaurants and the food and music and everything that kind of drives the city forward. This scene is, I feel like, growing up, but the personality of Charleston is still very much intertwined in it so there's still kind of a, a handshake in the air type thing because instead of it being this political art system where everybody's kind of vying for the top tier instead everyone just loves on each other supports each other and in that support you feel like the whole scene is kind of getting better and better each year so I feel like the sky's the limit and we're on this precipice of this being you know a, a world-renowned art scene. 